Hey, what's up? Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get up and running with displacement in Arnold. And then I'm going to show you a little bit about our new tactile materials over in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Let's jump in. Okay, so here we are in cinema. Let's start to get some displacement going. So right off the bat, we're going to start off with something fairly simple here. So I'm just going to grab a sphere. I'm in Arnold. Uh, let's bring this sphere radius down to like 18, and let's change the type to hexahedron, which is going to subdivide a lot more clean than your standard sphere. Okay, so let's add a few more subdivisions to this because that's pretty low. All right, now we have our sphere. Now, the, the main thing you have to remember about subdivisions and displacement is that you have to have geometry that's going to subdivide well. So quads usually work pretty well. Something with good topology is going to displace really well. So with our sphere selected here, Let's go jump down into our uh, C4D to A tags and grab an Arnold parameter tag, which is automatically going to sense that it's, it's a poly mesh, so we're in the right situation there. Let's go ahead and kick off the IPR here. Now, keep in mind, I am using Arnold CPU, and the reason I'm doing that is so that I can flip over into debug mode here, and I can change this debug mode to wireframe, which is going to allow me to show you guys like what's happening with the subdivisions on this sphere. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and jump over. We're going to talk a little bit about the displacement section of this tag in a second, but first let's talk about subdivision, because without subdivision, your displacement is really not going to work, or it's not going to look good. Uh, so under the subdivision tab here, under type, we have two different types of subdivision that we can apply via the Arnold tag. One of them is Cat Clark, the other one is Linear. So Cat Clark is going to introduce that Cat Clark subdivision surface algorithm that's going to subdivide your object and round it off as it does that. And then linear is going to introduce that subdivision without affecting the shape of the object at all. It's not really going to make a lot of sense if I, actually it will if I come over here and I change my, my sphere down to maybe like 16 segments again. So we're getting some really straight edges here. So now watch if I flip over into wireframe mode, we grab that tag. If I come over to subdivision and change this to linear, you can see we're subdividing our object, but it's not rounding out our sphere. Whereas if I flip it over to Cat Clark, we're going to get a rounded sphere. Okay, so let's go ahead and introduce more subdivisions initially so that it looks a little bit better. And we'll kick off our IPR and make sure that we're not subdividing it quite so much. Let, actually, two is fine for this. So what's this stuff down here then, this adaptive metric, adaptive error? What this is going to allow you to do is subdivide your, your object based on uh, the distance to the camera. Now, if adaptive metric is set to auto, if it senses that, it, that, that you have an actual displacement material in your, or a displacement map in your material, it's going to use the edge length. If it doesn't see uh, a, a material in there, it's going to use flatness. So um, I typically leave this at auto, and I want to show you exactly what the adaptive error is going to do. So if we change the adaptive error to like 10, you can see that it's actually brought the subdivisions down below the two that we had set up before. And that's because the camera's kind of far back. Now the farther we go back, actually let's go ahead and like raise our subdivision level one more time. If we bring our camera even further back and we kick this off, we're going to notice that it actually doesn't subdivide it that much at all. If we bring this number down, you can see it starts to subdivide the model based on how far away it is. So you're able to kind of like find a, let's actually just kick this off again, getting a little closer. It should subdivide it a little bit more evenly. Cool. So you can see we're getting more subdivisions the closer we get. Uh, I'm not really exactly sure what it's doing on these corners here, but that's interesting. Um, this is really good if you don't really want to subdivide the entire model in one to just like save some memory, save some space, save some time. Uh, but, you know, you got to kind of use it with caution because it can introduce some strangeness if parts of your model are super subdivided and some aren't. But it can be a nice way to kind of like save yourself a little bit of time. And all adaptive space means is basically do you want this to happen in the raster space or at the object space level? So typically you want to leave it on raster unless you're doing something crazy with instances. A deeper dive would probably be worth your time if you find yourself wanting to use these, these features down here. Uh, okay, so let's move on. Let's flip over to displacement. Now, we haven't built up a material for this at all yet, so we don't really have anything that's going to displace, but let's just talk about this for a second. Displacement height is going to control the amount of displacement. It's going to 
control whether or not uh, the, the, no, the surface is pushed up negative or positive. Now the bounds padding is going to define how much to extend that bounding box on the object so that it can include any additional displacements coming from the displacement shader. So typically, you definitely want to set your bounds padding up just to be just over your height. And obviously this is in centimeters. So let's go ahead and just bring this down to like maybe one centimeter. And then we want our bounds padding to just go right above that. So like 1.1. And our scalar zero value is, imagine this as like a water level. Now this is going to be, we're going to do this on the material side. We're not going to touch this, but you could do it here as well. You can actually affect scalar, scalar zero value in two different places. Uh, so I typically leave this at zero. We'll talk a little bit about what this means when we get into the material itself. Auto bump is something I definitely turn on because auto bump is going to introduce some high frequency displacement into the bump attribute so that you don't need as many subdivisions in your, in your displacement. If this is on, you're going to get some nice high quality, high frequency details without having to subdivide it a billion times. Okay, so now we got our tag set up. Let's go ahead and make a material really quick and see how it goes. So let's grab a Arnold standard surface. All right, so there's our standard surface. Let's put it on our sphere. And I think I'm just gonna, you know, make the, make it a little bit dark gray, bring our base weight down, maybe bring our roughness up. And let's introduce, let's just use a uh, max on noise. Grab a C4D noise. And we're gonna pipe this into displacement. So I'm just gonna bring up a displacement node. This is very important. Without this displacement node, you will not get displacement. So with the noise, we're going to plug that directly into our displacement of our displacement node. And with the displacement node selected, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we have our scale. Now, see, this is the interesting part. You can actually affect scale in two different places. I typically do it in the tag and not in the node, but I will adjust the scalar value this way. So let's just talk a second about scalar value. This is like your water level. So you have to imagine that, uh, let me just draw on the screen really quick. If this is 50% gray, that's your water level, right? So anything that is going to be above 50% gray in your displacement map is going to push up out of your surface. Anything that's below 50% gray is going to push down into your surface. So that's what the scalar value is. So we typically leave this at 0.5. All right, so let's pick a noise that's going to be a little bit more interesting. Let's grab like a Luca and let's bring the global scale down to like 20, somewhere in there. Now we're getting a really crusty sphere, which is working pretty well. Now, if we look at our debug mode, we can see that we're not really subdividing it that much. We're getting a lot of that information purely from that auto bump. If we turn that auto bump back off, let's just jump over here and turn auto bump off. We're going to see that we don't have as much information as, I, as you think you do. Actually, let me restart my IPR here. And so that's a, it's a really good way to add that extra detail. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna change my adaptive threshold to zero. We're just gonna like straight up subdivide this thing by quite a bit just to see. And there we go. And let's jump over into diffuse so we can see that a little bit better. And I'm gonna go ahead and just show you again what that auto bump is doing. I'm gonna zoom in. All right, so I'm zoomed into this little piece here. Let's grab our tag, go over to the displacement tab, turn off auto bump, and you can see most of that most of that detail is coming from that auto bump. It's not actually coming from the displacement because that this model is actually not subdivided that many times. So if we want to actually bring more detail into the actual displacement, we might want to increase let's bring our adaptive error down to zero and let's subdivide it by five. So now we're going to be introducing more of that detail into the actual geometry, not into that, uh, just the normal of it. So bringing it back over, turn on auto bump. Now we're just going to have tons of information in here. So if we zoom that out, and now we have a good balance of subdivision and auto bump is taking care of all that fine detail. But this is actually looking a lot more detailed than the previous uh, method. Let's jump out of the debug mode so we can really see this. Cool. So that's, that's really all there is to it. And you just kind of have to use your best judgment on how subdivided you want to get. I really like using this debug mode to kind of like work out the details on that to figure out exactly what kind of balance I want to achieve with it. But let me show you exactly how, how displacement works in our new tactile materials, which are going to have lots of really great displacement maps to use that really, really help with that detail. 
All right, so now that we know the basics of setting up Displacement and Arnold, let's have a little bit more fun. We've got a monster character here sitting like on a pile of clay. Maybe he's on like a turntable. And we're going to make this thing look like it was sculpted out of clay. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the new tactile materials over on Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Tactile is a new class of materials at Grayscale Gorilla Plus that are just like insanely detailed, high-quality PBR materials that are captured from real-life uh, surfaces. So um, we're launching it with clay and unfinished wood, but we're going to be adding tons more as time goes by. Okay, so uh, you can see here we have like clay dough clay, we've got like sculpted clay, we've got like rough clay, we've got all kinds of clay. So let's put maybe one of these terracotta clays on our monster and just see what we get. Now, they're already pre-built with displacement inside of the material itself so there's not really anything you need to do on the shader but you do need to like we said set up your tag correctly you can see we've got subdivisions here we've got a little bit of adaptive error and we've got our displacement set to about one centimeter with our bounce padding just going over that and just look at the detail in these tactile materials it's pretty incredible so let's just jump into a close-up and really take a look at every little scratch smudge fingerprint everything is just captured right perfectly in this material we jump over to our debug mode you can see that all the that displacement detail is captured perfectly so immediately we just have this great looking sculpted clay dude pretty awesome all right let's try a different one maybe we'll try one of the sculpting clays now the sculpting clays are kind of based on that monster clay that clay that you see in vfx and you see like creatures being sculpted like a dragon's head or something and it's usually done out of clay that doesn't dry up. And that's what sculpting clay is. We actually captured that same exact kind of clay. So if we jump into a close-up on this one, you can really see that this kind of has more of like that softer, melty, kind of waxy vibe. And it's a lot different than the terracotta rough clay that we had on there a second ago. And we just have a bunch that you can play with. The scratches, smudges, uh, fingerprints, all kinds of different clays that were actually captured from real clay. That's part of our tactile process is we source actual items working with a designer, an interior designer, and our team here. We all work together to source amazing stuff that we can capture and scan and turn into these amazing materials. You should also check out our unfinished wood, which is going to launch along the side of these clays, which are just oh, super, super rad looking woods. Anyway, all right, let's jump back out into a wide shot. Because we've set up our tag correctly and the tactile materials come pre-built with displacement set up, properly with the right uh, scalar value that's all you really need to do and of course you know you can get in there and, and mess with it all you want or you can just kind of play around and use it as is but yeah this turned out pretty dang cool let's jump back over to our terracotta one where we send it off yeah these are so fun they look so good anyway we can't wait to see what all of you do with these tactile materials and look for more uh, as time goes by it's just going to be a really great addition to the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library. Okay, that wraps up Arnold Displacement. Hope you got something out of it. Also, hope you check out our new tactile materials over on Grayscale Gorilla Plus. Got lots of cool new stuff coming out all the time over there. So go check it out. All right, until next time, I'll see you later.